All right. Good morning. We are live just in the nick of time. We're back to StreamYard, StreamYard wherever that is. Uh, I've got a guest today, so it's awesome. Looking forward to this. I've been trying to get Jordan on this channel for quite a long time. I was on his channel a couple weeks ago now, a few weeks ago, uh, and Jordan had reached out and said, hey, I want, let's go. Let's do this live stream. I took the day off. So thanks, Jordan, for taking the day off work uh, and spending the, you know, the first morning with us over here uh, on the stream. So I know Jordan has to go at about 8 45 so we're going to roll right into it before i but i'll do a quick intro thanks for everybody joining coffee crew is here uh we will do the good mornings as soon as i kind of give jordan the intro and then we'll get going for, into the show and of course your questions are uh, always welcome uh, jordan's got some kind of points he's going to want to bring up and talk about but we'll see how it goes that's how we like to roll uh so let's without further ado we'll bring jordan on jordan's channel is a covered call etf investing over on youtube it's linked down in the description so you can always check that out subscribe you know all that good good youtube stuff uh, to help him out so let's get jordan on uh we were having technical difficulties earlier but we were, we're here everything should work we we just made it between <laughs> between audio and visual and kids running out of the house here and getting sweaters down to kids at the driveway uh yeah so it, we, we sure. made it just in the of time like you said scott Makes me glad I don't have, have kids sometimes in the morning as they're scrambling around. Let's just do the good mornings yeah. for everybody and then we'll get we'll get going. Okay. Does that sound sound good? Let's go. Who's here? Maggie is here. Good morning, Maggie. Garden Happiness. First time I think here and beat uh beat Candace to the to the punch. So congratulations. Uh Candace is here as always. Good morning, Candace, channel member. Good morning, always Candace. Good. <laughs> always good to have you here. I think Jordan probably yeah. subscribed to your channel as well, I think. Yep. 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 Mountain yep. Finance. Watching watching her watching her videos too. Yeah, good good channel there. Uh, let's get her joke. This one wasn't good today, though, Candace. Uh, what strategy does Batman and Robin uh, use to grow? It kind of didn't work out. Yeah, what what strategy does Batman and Robin use for growing their bat folio? Uh, oh, ooh, yeah, di yeah, dynamic. Nice, nice dad joke there. Walter <laughs> cost averaging. Yeah, that was a, uh, that was a that was a bad one. But uh, maybe Batman can use a cover call <laughs> ETF strategy instead, as we're going to talk about a little bit today. Well, see, Batman and Robin don't have uh, a lot of <clears throat> they don't have a lot of free time on their hands, right? They're keeping the city safe, right? So they need a strategy that they can, like you said, dollar cost average into and don't have to pay too much attention to a broad market based portfolio with the cover call overlay. So yeah, probably there a cover go. call might, uh, not might quite suit good, them better. Not quite as good as, of a punchline maybe, but probably makes more yeah, sense. I know, I know. <laughs> it's, it's yeah, it's uh, a, a portfolio manager's pitch right there. Uh, okay, uh, MC, good to have you here. Always good, always good. Yeah. And uh, Nadia, That's another channel member, MC channel member. Uh, won that channel membership yesterday or the day before. Nice. And I've seen them both in the chat before. Any, yeah. Anytime I pop in. And Candace, no, we're good. We had to get the with the guests today. We had to go to StreamYard, so we're back to the dark side. Um, no music, and like I said, we were struggling to get going this morning, figuring out microphones and headphones and all that fun stuff. Uh, with the joys of yeah. running a YouTube live stream. Yeah, totally. Uh, and you there you go. Yeah, you have to. If people miss it, I should have had I been more on the ball, we would have figured it out. Would have figured it out. And uh, yeah, and this is an inside joke with Nadia. She has kids too, and she's always yeah. yelling. If I call her in the morning, she's always yelling at her kids to put their shoes on to go to school. So it's kind of a running yeah. joke. You yeah, of course, shoes. Yeah. You can probably relate to that. And we're well, almost today. Today it was, uh, are you done in the bathroom yet? <laughs> <laughs> we're almost through lots of people viewing here it's awesome it's awesome stan is here happy friday tgif and dank magic is here too uh the emojis don't show on Streamyard, but that's the uh coffee pot emoji so without further ado <coughs> excuse me i've got my coffee pot coffee going let's uh let's yeah. get going off let's just start off i guess uh, jordan maybe introduce yourself a little bit uh to the crew that doesn't know you and then we'll go from there uh, yeah, sure. Uh, my name is Jordan. I live in uh, just a suburb of Vancouver. Uh, I run a, a, a new channel called uh, Cover Call e Cover Call ETF Investing, uh, just dedicated to, you know, the further education of cover calls. It's not a it's not a big space at the moment. I think the biggest name is uh, I, I'm sure many of, from your audience are probably familiar with Adrian from Passive income investing. He's sort of the, I guess, the pioneer of, of you know, uh, sharing his experience with what it's like to live off of covered calls. And um, mainly, my goal is to create a 
a broad market based portfolio in covered calls that can eventually replace my income and, you know, just give me more flexibility in, into the future as, as far as time off, what I might be able to afford. And I've chosen cover call ETFs as that medium to do that. So I don't invest anymore in single stocks or other ETFs. It's 100% cover call ETFs. And I know we're, we'll get into, I'm sure what exactly those are and maybe try to help um, debunk any uh, questions or any concerns about that kind of stuff. So my knowledge, of course, I'm no uh, financial advisor. There we go. Okay. Um, <clears throat> anyway, so uh, yeah, just running my own channel now and hopefully give some better insights into what cover calls are. And um, it's still I'm very much in the experiment. Oh. Uh, trying to achieve with it. So we'll see what the audience likes and then I'll kind of just go from there. Go from there. Yeah. So let's, I'm going to start off though with you, you two a little bit. I know we, we, we tried to a little history on with Jordan. We tried to <clears throat> hook up for these live streams probably like almost two years ago when I first started my channel. So it's finally good to get Jordan on this channel and me having the opportunity to go over to yeah. his channel. We have kind the, of, the old fan. The... We have kind of like differing, differing, um, investments for sure. Like I think our portfolios are completely different. So I always found it interesting just to talk to other people. And this is why part of the reason for bringing Jordan on as well is everybody's got their own strategies. Everybody's got their own, you know, see their own pros and cons for everything. Um, and let's start off actually, that's perfect. And I was going to mention uh, it's perfect time. If people have questions, uh, I'm by no means an expert, as everybody knows, like I'm learning this as we go uh, with my channel and learning, learning about a more deeper in investing. And if people have questions, fire them in the comments. And we actually have our first one here. So I'm going to pull it up from MC. MC always has the, the, the most, the best comments and questions, some of the best on the, on the channel. So MC always appreciate it. Uh, let's pull this one up. Uh, is there a, is there a reason uh, to use coverage call strategy versus a dividend portfolio with month, monthly distributions? pros versus cons. There's a good, there's a good one for you to start off with, uh, Jordan. Oh, for sure. Uh, okay. Is there a reason to use cover call strategy as uh, versus dividend portfolio? <clears throat> yeah. I mean, with the dividend, you're, you're kind of playing uh, the fence a little bit. And what I mean by that is uh, if you're into say dividend, dividend growth investing, uh, I take it you're, you're seeking some yield. You want, um, you want that payout, whether it's monthly or quarterly, uh, especially something to buoy your portfolio um, in maybe more pessimistic times where um, pessimistic times where uh, there might not where the landscape is like maybe we're in a bear market, but you still want to be adding capital, growing your positions. Uh, maybe you don't necessarily have uh, the cash to continually uh redeploy back into these positions, but at least you're generating something off of the investment to do so. Hopefully your dividends are growing over time. You get that capital appreciation as well. With cover calls, um, it's uh, instead of playing the fence, you're really on one side, right? You are, you recognize as uh, just from my own personal, um, I guess, position into this, I recognize that, um, with cover calls, I'm not going to get the price appreciation. So no matter the marketplace, I I want to um, absolutely max out yield uh, and redeploy it back into the same positions as much as humanly possible, knowing that I can't predict the future. Um, and this is a fairly predictable way of being able to project what my income is going to be into the future, knowing that dividend growth really won't be much of a thing with cover calls, price creation won't really be much of a thing, but when you're already achieving a compounding at month over month, uh, you can fairly easily project where you might be. Now, granted, cover call premiums or think of them like dividends can very easily, they can get cut too based on market environments that I can't predict. But this way, I don't want to try to predict uh, price appreciation. I, I think that's, uh, I think that's, uh, I've, I've done that in the past and one of my favorite stocks actually used to be Algonquin and uh, I, I I used to do, uh, what do they call that, uh, um, a dis, uh, the equation for discount, 
a discount cash flow model and trying to predict that. And, you know, at the time, you know, $20 a share was a steal for Algonquin based on what I could project. And look what happened to Algonquin yeah. down to $10. That, that stock is probably not going to recover to unless like we keep printing money like we were doing in 2021. Uh, that it was quite clear to me because Algonquin is so focused on their, on their renewable sector, 75% of everything they do is renewable. Uh, no, I think I got that backwards. I think it's 25% actually is, uh, in renewables. Uh, either way, they try to, um, advertise themselves as, um, a renewables utility company, but they are heavily dependent on, um, uh, government, government subsidies, uh, and so when, when, the, when the government is bankrolling them, times are great. When money is plentiful, not, it's not. right? And then when things tighten up, that disappears, investment disappears, and your discount cash flow model uh, obviously goes out of whack. Uh, so especially when I started to see that, that's when I, I knew that uh, I'm not, I, you know, for the time I have to uh, try to... I don't know, try to understand qualitative and quantitative uh, metrics. I, I just realized that that's just not my angle. I do like to do that kind of stuff, but I found with cover calls, it's and ETFs in general. It's a much easier way to uh, try to value things and they seem more consistent. Good call. Uh, we're, and we're going to put you on the spot here with more questions, which is, which is sure. great uh, from Candice. Uh, I hope I think you can see this. Uh, how do you feel about uh, uh, yeah. some of the covered call ETFs that come with a wee bit of uh, ROC? I believe that's for return on capital. Yeah, return on capital. I'm I'm actually uh, I just did one video that that touched on this, and I'm coming out with another video probably this weekend uh, that deals with return on capital. I know that this is a uh, this is a point of contention with uh, covered call ETFs. So the idea with um, return on capital is, or why there's an issue with it, is that in your in the uh, issuer's T3 uh, filings, when they break down how the investment, uh, how the how your investments got paid out to you, so eligible dividends, <clears throat> uh, foreign income, uh, foreign taxes withheld, capital gains, and the fifth one, I guess, would be uh, return of capital and it and your investment of distributions is broken down into those uh, five categories if you decide to look up um, each fund issuers uh, t3 so i've recently done this with hamilton and i'm about to do it again with hamilton where i i break down the t3 uh, basically what a better investment is between uh, uh, hyld and hdiv right they're both with uh, Hamilton. But anyway, back to your question, just to set that up. Um, HYLD has a massive return of capital. It's like something per unit. Uh, I think it was $1 and 53 cents you would have made in 2022. And about 79 cents of that is return of capital. So now on the surface, that looks like uh, basically half of your investment has been returned to you via the issuer of the fund. Um, but as, uh, as I've gathered from watching uh, his videos and he recently did one with um, the fund managers of Hamilton with Wes and Pat, the fund managers there. And they were basically trying to help people understand uh, bad uh, return of capital, which is good return of capital. So I guess the, the, the good return of capital is any losses realized within the fund um, get converted into return of capital. So it's just a reclassification. Bad rock would be, yes, the, the fund is trying to stay consistent with this, the distribution payouts. And in doing so, they're going to return some of your capital. Now, I believe Pat in that video did say, um, look, month over month, because HYLD holds seven cover call funds and those seven uh well i believe i think five of them uh are uneven they don't pay out the exact same amount every month and hyld does pay out the same amount amount every month so they have to do some tweaks every month to allow for that consistent payment 
So in the moment, they might give you a little bit of return of capital every month from your initial principal, but that gets made up in the next month uh, with, um, uh, what is it, the, the Global X funds. They actually do pay out, um, they, they, um, they, cap, they cap what they pay out and then they, uh, I guess, return that capital back into the fund or any, anyway, uh, sorry. Best way to describe that would be um, they, they'll pay out 1% based on the share price and anything above and beyond that, uh, if it's above and beyond that, they will dump that money back into the fund to buy back uh, new positions. Um, but sometimes HYLD is going to have to do that based on just fluctuations in price. Uh, but um, uh, Adrian just announced he's going to be doing a Q&A with the people from Global X and JP Morgan. So I'm really excited about that one. I think uh, I made just a massive comment to Adrian saying like what we need to do in this video, and I really hope he addresses it, is uh, they need to, how do we know how much of return of capital is good return of capital versus bad return of capital? I understand that a certain percentage is, um, is realized losses and they reclassify it. But how do we as investors into those funds know if it's good rock or bad rock? Or can we calculate that ourselves? So anyway, if you, if you are subscribed to Passive Income Investing, you would see an announcement where Adrian posts that. And you'll see one of my comments that's a couple paragraphs we saying like, you, 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 we need to like, we need this because I, I don't know that. All I know is I know I, the difference between good rock and bad rock, but how much of it is that in each fund? Good call. All these questions put on the spot today. It's good. Yeah. It's good. Thanks, Candice. Uh, another one here, not so much a question, but a comment, but, we can, but I can work this into a question because it, it will sure. kind of, I think will help out definitely was um, from, from Matthew, uh, Matthew Milner. Um, it's payday, well, Friday, it's payday. It's payday for me today too. I don't know if you get paid if, if it's, if it's, if it's this every second, yeah. you know, whatever, how me, you, me too. it's Friday. So uh, also known as invest day. Um, uh, I've talked about on the channel, like I do my regular dollar cost averaging. I do, a, I do a deposit into my TFSA every Every Monday is that I've chosen to do it. Uh, Payday is Friday, but I kind of just wait until Monday to kind of get it to start off the kind of start off the week in a good a good week to be able to invest in my TFSA. I've chosen really this year uh, to do the hundred dollars for the year into basically two ET, generally two ETFs: VDY, Canadian Dividend Stock, a little bit in the S and P, and then I'll usually try to bump. Just kind of then it depends a little bit with what I'm trying to bump up in, in a little bit. It, lately, it's been Brookfield renewables. If I'm unsure, I'll put it in cash. How do you, I guess this is the long end of the question. Uh, what's your kind of like with your investing, how are you doing it? Dollar cost averaging? Are you like, what are you, everybody's got these, you know, their ideas of what they're doing. Um, how are you, how are you doing it basically? I guess. Oh, you, uh, you know what? Just so boring. Um, <laughs> uh, if you follow me in blossom, I probably have the fewest trades of anybody on there. It's like anytime I get, Anytime I receive that distribution, it just goes right back into the same thing. Uh, I got two funds, XYLD in my RSP, uh, spousal RSP, uh, a reason yeah. for that. And then HYLD is in my TFSA. Um, I do this. Uh, they're already broad market based, already well diversified. Um, there are other avenues as far as diversification that I am looking into. I'm not I'm there. I don't want to ramble on about it, but um, basically diversification of fund managers and diversification of investing styles. So cover calls, uh, activate, um, they have active funds. There are systematic funds. Systematic funds are basically the same thing month over month. They do not change whatever the market condition is. It's the same rules every month. Uh, whereas the more active, the, the fund managers adjust based on market conditions. So um, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, like I said, back to your question as as to, uh, yeah, just dollar cost average yeah. every month. Uh, today I'll get paid, so I'll dump in a couple hundred dollars back into the TFSA today. Um, just did my taxes, so I got a little bit of RSP room. I pay into a, a defined benefit plan, so I don't get... The same kind of room that um, I'm sure a lot of 
your viewers necessarily get. So because I have a pension through my work, it cuts off um, a good oh, chunk okay. of my RSP room. So I don't really have that much room every single year to, to put in. Uh, but uh, when I do, I'll put in a little bit again. Dollar cost average. Every dollar month cost average. Yeah. Into, the, yeah. I mean, you say bore. You say boring. On you know, on, like you're on Bloss, saying Blossom, not doing a lot of trades. I, I'm the same. We've it's kind of come across the last little while. Like this. For, well, really, for this year, for me, it's been really. I mean, kind of boring for the most part. I haven't really done a lot of uh, in the last little bit. Haven't done a lot of any kind of trades in my in my TFSA. I should sorry, I shouldn't say that. I have done a few. I did sell. Uh, I had re, uh, a real can and I did put it in, the, in a, actually a covered, it's a, it's the Tesla, the yield, the yield shares. Yeah. Um, so that was a good, that worked out <clears throat> finally, finally a good trade uh, for me. Um, yeah. But for the most part, consistency and pretty, pretty, I don't know. I think investing sometimes should be boring. You know, it, you it's meant to be. It, Warren it is, Buffett has, has talked about this. It's meant to be. Um, I remember Graham Stefan. He did an experiment over the last couple of years. He's done it every single year at the end of the year where he gets uh, a monkey, a random monkey. Uh, he knows somebody that uh, that has a he knows somebody with a channel about a monkey, and I guess they connected and they got. Um, um, this monkey to pick like 10 stocks at random. Yeah, yeah. And in 2021, this monkey outper like did 40% just random and didn't touch it. Um, and then uh, and anyway, did a video on animals just picking random stocks. And these animals did better than basically yeah. everybody because they don't touch their investments. Once you have uh, and you believe that your your strategy is sound, right? If you are confident in it, this is what I'm going to do. Like for me, I, I'm going to live and die by that cover call sword. That's the path I've chosen to take. Yeah. And I'm not touching it. I'm just going to build upon it. And that's it. Um, and but that's why the, the animal portfolios tend to outperform the active managers because they don't touch it. They don't they don't they don't uh, they don't mess with it. That's the big thing. Yeah. Uh, another couple of questions are coming in. This is awesome. So sure. uh, makes our life easy, right? Um, yeah. Uh, this and you mentioned looking at other sectors. Is there any sectors you feel to be underrepresented in the covered call ETF world? Um, I think from what I've seen, I'd probably like to see more energy in there, like more energy specific. Not, I believe in Canada we have a uh, like a utilities, which is kind of gets you the, it gets you expo exposure in energy into energy. But I'd like to see a very specific. Um, maybe an ETF that's not as diversified as as most. Reason being that oil and gas is highly volatile, and cover calls the vol they thrive on volatility. Yeah. Right? Like if there was a Suncor ETF, a single stock ETF, I think you'd see a lot of Canadians at least make have some position into that if they're familiar with cover calls because Suncor is highly volatile. Uh, so right now you you might get like a pipeline, maybe a telecoms and and maybe some energy companies like Amera and uh, Suncor and Enbridge. Um, but I would probably like to see, you know, an at the money energy invested in just oil and gas companies, um, maybe more concentrated in the smaller to mid cap. I think that would be a really interesting uh, mix to see. Uh I would suspect that the div or the distribution would would be wild. I think I think that would be a really hard one to stay consistent. But just out of my own curiosity, I think that would be one that would be interesting to see. Now, if you're to do one that's a little more conservative, maybe do an energy one with some of the bigger uh, companies again, Suncor, um, Enbridge, um, Canadian Natural Utilities, Imperial Oil. Uh, maybe some of the bigger ones and just have it that just make it specific to just maybe maybe 10 of the big of the big oil and gas producers but certainly oil and gas but maybe they don't maybe i haven't really seen that maybe there are there is something yeah, that, out there but i'm just i'm just not seeing it for that find it. that's the thing i mean somebody that's watching might see it if, you, if you're watching this maybe on a replay or something leave a comment if you know of something there's, there's, that's the hard thing with etfs there's, there's, I mean, there's thousands oh, there's right? thousands yeah and I, it's like and, deciding what one to go into and segment and it's it it can be it's like a it's like a maze and a puzzle and a, everything thrown into one like it's just sometimes very difficult you can see the most popular ones but there's sometimes some other yeah. hidden, I, hidden I, gems. I think i think bmo i believe has one but it's uh it's a 50 percent 
it's on 50% of the fund out of the money. Um, yeah, they have, I, they have a I Canadian believe they have, cover call. Is it a Canadian cover call ETF that they have? What's the... Um, yeah, uh, they have a bunch, but they had, yeah. I, I believe they have one for every sector. For every I think, sector, okay. I think their oil and gas one, though, is... Uh, it, again, it, it it's more broad, so they've included, I think, some utilities into that that maybe have something to do with like, pipelines and whatnot. But um, so when I saw it, I, I believe, I forget what the ticker is called, but uh, I wasn't too interested in it. Yeah. Okay, well, someone might see it on the replay and leave a comment. If I see if yeah. it comes across, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll message you it for sure. Um, nice. Another great question from MC, and I, hopefully this all fits in there. I think it does, because this will talk about some of the red flags or risks you see in the strategy. Um, so I'll just read it out so people yeah. are, that are listening. It, uh, I believe you mentioned cover call strategies are relatively a new thing. Yes. Uh, are you concerned at all about the lack of longevity of these of this strategy? Um, and are you do you see are there any red flags or risks that you that you see? Uh, yeah, I, I think just going back way before ETFs, um, uh, cover calls naturally have been around ever since I think options have been a thing. Right? Options is really made up of really four things, uh, selling puts, buying, buying calls and selling calls. And, that's, and, and every other option strategy kind of flows out from each one of those um, um, categories. So with cover calls, uh, again, that there is a decades-long history with them. Um, as far as ETFs are concerned, uh, I do think that in the last couple of years, there's been an explosion of cover call ETFs. I think the longest, the, bit, the longest history we have is uh, the the Global X funds, XYLD, RYLD, QYLD. Um, I'm personally invested in XYLD. Uh, Mainly because uh, I was an S and P 500 guy before cover calls, and I like the idea of, of having uh, my foot in with a cover call strategy that is that is tied to the S and P 500. It's been the benchmark for you know decades and decades and decades, and to me, it's maybe the safest index out there. Um, and with cover calls, you still own the underlying investments; you just have that cover call overlay. Um, if you're not on Blossom, I did make a post of, of, of uh, um, somebody on Alpha, uh, Seeking Alpha did a back test of what, of what a 100%. Uh, so think of XYLD. If XYLD has, if it had been around for, say, 50 years, which obviously it hasn't been, it came out in 2011, but they basically back tested the S&P 500 with a 100% cover call overlay on it, dating back from 1986 to, to 2011. And in that time frame, the cover call ETF, well, for just pretend sake, we'll just call it XYLD. If it had been around, it actually outperformed the S&P 500. I think it was 830%, not by much, to about 100, uh, 807%. So 830% to 807%. Now, in that time frame, there was inflation issues, uh, housing corrections, yeah. financial instability, dot-com bubble. So throughout all that turmoil, cover calls showed that they were resilient um, and could actually stand up against the, the S&P as a whole. Now, naturally, the S&P had, I'm sure, better years, way better years where it outperformed, especially during the dot-com era before the crash. It um, the S and P would have wildly out, outperformed cover calls. So, the last decade, cover calls don't get much of a of a mention because it, it's a bull market. People are throwing their money in, into things that are one hundred percent growth, and cover calls take a back seat take, during take bull up. out bull markets. Uh, the risk going forward, um, just based on that knowledge, I'm I'm pretty confident in in having a full cover call strategy. Um, but maybe some of the issues I'd have with it are some of the more exotic cover calls. I'm not necessarily too worried about the broad market, like the S&P 500, NASDAQ, a Russell, uh, anything that's tied to an index, I'm not necessarily worried about. It's more a case of like um, the single stock ETFs out there, um, the ones with crazy leverage on it, um, 
basically cover calls that are really hard to understand. Like even Jeppy is really kind of hard to understand. And it's one of the cover call titans out there. Um, and I want to invest in Jeppy. I do have exposure through HYLD, but um, I might just leave it at that. Um, so I'm, I'm, I try to be careful with, with that. I am going to grow it out, but I might, I might tend to focus more on the all-in-one funds, the fund, the, the, the ETFs that invest in other ETFs just for diversification purposes. Yep. Um, and that's probably about it. But uh, I think if, if you're just focused on the index, um, there's probably like, uh, you know, you put your money into anything, there's always going to be some form of risk. But I think that yeah. um, you, you might be a little safer off that way. There we go. Uh, another question, a jerk. Jerksy beef, jerksy beef. Uh, do you think high HYLD would be good in an RRSP? I'll let you answer that because I'm not really sure. I don't. I don't have any of these uh, funds in, in either of my, like any accounts. So, uh, certainly, I think. Well, the only the only difference is going to be um, the withholding tax within the RRSP. That's because Hamilton is a Canadian issuer invested in cover calls that originate in the States, um, the 15% withholding tax is going to be applied to it. So if there was an HYLD version out of the States and not HYLD.U, I don't want, I hope nobody makes that mistake um, just because it's in American dollars. So HYLD has, uh, there's a version of it in Canadian dollars and another one in American dollars, but it still comes from Hamilton, which is Canadian based. Okay. So if there was an HYLD equivalent in the States with, with an issuer based in the States with cover calls generated in the States, then you avoid the, um, the 15% withholding tax. Um, but if you're okay with that, if you're okay with, um, uh, the withholding tax, which is hard to get away from unless you dedicate your entire RSP to uh, American issued um, American issuers, then it's totally fine. I uh, honestly, I've debated it too. I've debated getting rid of XYLD since I already have it in HYLD and just having HYLD also in my RSP as well. I've considered it. I think it would be fine. There we go. Uh, Alan, happy Friday. Always good. Always good on a Friday. Happy These Friday. Days. Happy Friday. Everybody's always in a good mood on Friday. Uh, Matthew, especially when it's payday. Especially when it's payday. And it's uh, back to Matthew's. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are sweet. So he, yeah, dog. So he started dropping $500 in both TFSA and RRSP every two weeks. That's awesome. I wish I could. Yeah. That, I wish, wow. I wish, yeah, that is. That is, that is good. Hey, Matthew, like that is thousand, awesome. So a thousand bucks. Like, Congratulations so for that. So two th that's, that's pretty good what $2,000 a, a yeah. month going into, into your investments is pretty, um, is pretty awesome to be able to do that. That's good. Um, I wish yeah. <laughs> I'd have to move, I'd have to move back home with my, with my mom, I think to be able to do that. <laughs> you know, what's cool too. If you're, if you're reinvesting your dividends every month and you're contributing and you track it on a yep. spreadsheet, what you're going to see is your compounded monthly rate is going to, gonna look way higher and it, it, what it'll do for you it's a psychological thing you're like wow i'm compounding maybe two yeah. percent a month based on the reinvestment of uh, of of what the funds produce or your stocks produce and your contributions anyway i do that i think it's a cool way yeah to I, do, I do i do too like i started tracking last year I, i've gone back and done because i started my portfolio basically in 20 it's it'll be it'll be two year two year anniversary tomorrow so it's yeah. almost been going for two years, uh, basically, essentially. And I've, I do, I track just a simple spreadsheet with, with the amounts, but it re I really noticed it after, uh, after the first year of being consistent, like being consistent, getting the balance up to around, you know, roughly $10,000 at the time. And that's when I really start now to see the dividends are just mm -hmm. like, uh, it's, you get those, you get those emails when they come through and, and I, I do, I do, I, if it's, if it's one that I can buy a fractional share of, I just fire literally the same day right back in that same amount back in the fractional share just keep on keep on trucking and it uh it really it really snowballs really oh snowballs. it does and and you know what then tends to happen is you you want it to just go faster yeah. and once you see it starting to pick yeah. up steam you're like you, you start yeah. projecting where where that snowball might be in a year or five years or ten that's years what you start to hopefully and, think, and, think about yeah 
Yeah, it's and that's good. and that's where you really, I think, start to you know advance your own education and finance just a little bit more and a little bit more every yeah. single time when you see that just how real that is based on your own income circumstances at your own job, yeah. and you start to realize like I can actually I could whatever your goal is I it's totally achievable in your current um, situation. Yeah. Yeah, totally good. Uh, Candace has a call later today with Blossom. I don't know what that means. Uh, maybe elaborate on that, Candace. Are you? Uh, are they interesting? I'm. I. I have. I have Blossom. Uh, I don't have a lot of time. Like, I. I was think I said before. I focus my time on the channel here to to spend my time. I'm. I'm a lurker. I'm definitely a lurker over on uh, Blossom instead of posting. Um, and I don't have my account linked. And I started to do it manually and then i thought this forget it i'm not i'm just gonna lurk over here on on blossom but uh it'll be interesting to see what you're doing over there yeah this uh interesting lots of great lots of great um say hi to max for us lots of great uh lots of great uh investors over there too it's a good kind of yeah. place to uh to, to check out but um it's uh i'm i just kind of scroll through and don't uh i don't post much i, I i'm a lurker on those things but <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Uh, what do we got here? We got uh, now that the U.S. is starting to embrace cover call ETFs. Are you thinking of diving into the U.S. market? Um, I, 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 well, based on the question, I, I think I already do that with um, XYLD. It's a Global X is it's it's a cover call based out of the U.S. So for me, again, XYLD um, is, and I have that within my RSP. And it was the first cover call I actually got into um, back last year in, I think, August. That's when I, yeah, that's when I really started to transition more of my portfolio away from uh, single stocks. It was not all at once, but uh, certainly within my RSP, uh, that's when I transitioned everything into uh, XYLD. Keep it simple. Yeah, that's um, that's what I have to do a little bit with my portfolio. I, I keep kind of looking at it a little bit and just have to kind of sometimes simple it simple it down. But it is fun to invest in certain individual stocks as well. Like there's oh there's totally the, you know just be it gives you something to kind of to follow do. and to do yeah. and for yeah. better or worse, right? Obviously you never invest in something that you can't afford to lose the money in, especially if it's a single stock that you're, you know, maybe more speculative than I mean some of those I do have in my account, but um it's still fun because you, you have to have fun with investing too. It can't be just I mean you, it should be boring, do. but you still no, have to I have know. fun and take it, I, it, I, you know it take should a be it, it should be boring to make money, but it should be um, fun to maybe allocate maybe a certain percentage of yeah. your per portfolio to just, to just, you know, experiment and try out new things with, I think. Yeah. And it doesn't have to be a lot of money either. You That's know, totally I mean, fun. if you think, I always kind of think about it, the perfect example, I always give it on my, my mm -hmm. channel is, is, is CLO waste, like waste solutions. I spent $175 and it's gone down to basically nothing. I'll hang on to it. It's a learning experience, but I always kind of think, well, yeah. who knows, but I've, I've spent, I've spent, in my lifetime, I mean, I'm 47. I've spent $175 on on a lot stupider things than than that. So you learn from these mistakes as well. I think if you take it as if, if something goes wrong, it's a learning mistake. You just try not to do it again. And that's kind of how we, how you roll with your with your in, with investing. It's definitely, especially when you're doing it yourself, you you learn as you go. You you're learning as you go. Right. And you learn from your mistakes. You, you, just, you just hopefully don't. You have them. to. Uh, if you try to copy other people, uh, yeah. the, the certainty of you failing or being anxious or stressed about and thinking too much and losing too much sleep about your portfolio is quite high. Yeah. Just because I've been there, especially as a be be beginner. Everybody, I think um, everybody has, for sure. Right. But you. the thing is, yeah. that, um, like I noticed on Blossom, like, uh, well, I have noticed comments in the past where guys are, or people are trying to say, you know, we shouldn't put out this kind of information because um, people are going to read it wrong. And people, look, people are going to read it however they're going to read it. They might get burned. Um, unfortunately, that's that's just part of just maturing in this space. And the more you take it seriously and the more um, finance, the language of finance you surround yourself with, with books and audiobooks, regular books, podcasts, YouTube, you're going to start to see the patterns of, of how people think and talk. And you'll so, sort of start to fall more in line with um, what you deem or how to value risk, or I should say assess risk. 
And um, maybe, maybe how to identify first, not what to buy, but first uh, what to avoid. Because once you know what to avoid, it sure makes picking uh, how you want to invest a lot easier. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Let's get the, I know you have to go at 845. So let's go through the last little bit of questions. Like we'll do speed round, sure. I guess. Sure. We'll go through and then because uh, I obviously I know you're it's your day off today. We're not going to keep you. We could go on for hours. I here. can't believe how fast it. that's been. I know it goes really fast. It goes really Jeez. fast. Um, let Justin welcome, Justin. A uh, year from now, taking independent control. Awesome. Right. Uh, Justin's a regular on the channel as well. Nice. Uh, my dividends are almost 450 bucks a month. Oh, that's awesome. That's yeah, congratulations. That a year, so that's, that's good. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's, that's substantial. That's a san cool. substantial portfolio. And yeah. without knowing his yield, imagine if that's like a, if that's a two, imagine if that was like a 3% yield. It's like, that's a, that would be a big portfolio. But yeah. it, even, even if it was a cover call one, uh, you can certainly achieve 450 a month with a much smaller portfolio. There we go. Good stuff. And uh, Claudia, Claudia, Cla sorry, Claudio, uh, Souza, uh, what do you think about BMO? We talked about it a little bit, but BMO cover calls, uh, they do have some um, with modest returns compared to the Hamilton ones. They are. They're more focused, I think, for more conservative investors who maybe want to just dip their toes into cover call ETFs. Again, half of their portfolios, all of them, half of them have the cover call overlay where the other half participate in full market appreciation with the share price and there i believe all of them are out well out of the money so they generate a little bit um so if you're interested to participate a little bit in cover calls and also get some share price then um and again just want to dip your toes in i think there's um they're fine uh i'm a lot more aggressive with the cover calls uh so hamilton's i believe is much more focused on those who are i think more want to be more aggressive that way yeah. There we go. Excellent. Uh, Canada, so jinx it. Okay, we're not going to jinx most, uh, about uh, about Blossom. I, I don't want to put it on the spot, but I'm sure we'll see a video if something happens. There we go. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Matthew, what is a good place to get a free spreadsheet? Uh, I can answer this one, Matthew. I do have one on my channel you can you can use. Uh, if you just search for one of the videos, I do have a, it's on a Google Sheet that you can have. You can go in and edit and download a copy and save it on Google. You'll need a Google account, obviously. But if you have a YouTube account, you'll have a Google account. Uh, if you can't find that video for some reason over on my about page on the channel, uh, shoot me an email and I'll send you the link to it. Um, it's very basic. You just have to get, plug it in manually. It totals it up monthly. Then it does a quarterly and a yearly dividend. That's it just for the year. So you can copy and do a new spreadsheet every year. Very basic, very, very basic. Um, there is websites. I don't know, Jordan, if you know a good website that would do it for you, or if you have any other kind of thoughts on um... that. Oh gosh, no! This is this has been one area that I've neglected for a long time. I, I built my own on on a uh, on an Excel spreadsheet, but I need to level it up because yeah. it's it, it was just one I put together. Um, I've I've changed from Quest Trade and and TD, and I've just transferred companies around. So I've I've actually lost a lot of history from the first um, year and a bit right. of investing just by doing that. I didn't think I would, but. It's like if you transfer your account out of Quest Trade, you lose your history because if you don't have that one thousand dollars in there, um, yeah, history's gone. Yeah. So, uh, basically, from the last summer until now, that's when I've started to track everything again, but just lightly track everything. I was You'd actually looking at using one of your yeah. uh, spreadsheets there. It's um, simple. I, I found it online. I kind of edited it a little bit to kind of like make it more simple, I guess. Because I, I, I right. always find if if something's too complicated, you're just not going to do it, and yeah. Sometimes the easier is better because data in is, is I, I just, you just know, like the data you put in has to be, you want it. If it's, if the data going in is, is crap, if you're, if you're not on top of it and it's crappy, the data coming out of it's going to be crappy. So this one, you it just will. literally, you have to manually total up on, you just use my calculator to total up for the month, I plug it in for the month and then it carries, you know, then it automatically obviously calculates by quarter and, but I don't track them individually. Uh, it's just, it's just a lump you know, lump sum. I know some people get right in there to tap, to track like individual ET, you know, ETFs, individual stocks, dividends. I, I'm just, I'm more simple than that. Um, and it seems to, seems to work for me. So there yeah. we go. Um, I know you have to go, uh, dank, dank magic. Uh, we won't be, have a chance to get in this, into this question, split church ones, but what we'll do is we'll leave it. Maybe Jordan, and next time you come back, if you want to talk about them, um, we could always have a, sure. have a conversation of that. I, I actually I don't know split. If, 
I'm not I'm not all that familiar with split share sure. funds. Uh, I'm, then I couldn't, really, couldn't speak to them. I'll direct uh, Dan, I'll direct you over to Candace's channel at Mountain Finance. She's got some great videos on some split share funds. I think she just mostly did a, a, a recent one fairly. I think it was on Canoe. Is it Canoe? I think EIT split fund. I, I could be wrong. I don't have them in my account either. I'm not probably the person to ask, but um, yeah. Candace has for sure. So shout out to Candace for that. And we'll leave it at this one. So yeah. So Claudio, perfect. Answer the question. There, there we go. I know we're after it's 846 by my clock. So I, won't, I don't yeah. want to keep you. Thanks so much for taking the time of your day off to come. Thanks on. for having me on this. Uh, on. Hopefully you make it a, um, like you said, hopefully you make it a fairly regular thing. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's always nice to have a guest. Want to takes, do these. takes some pressure off, gives people a new face to look at and uh, <laughs> more questions to ask. These are always, always kind of fun. Uh, again, thanks Jordan. Uh, if people haven't subscribed to Jordan's channel, check out the video description. It will be down below cover call ETF. Um, in investing and i see i was wrong see i i don't sometimes don't canoe is income trust that's what I, yeah uh, but she does have a, a so that will answer your question tank magic she does have a, a split court video on her channel there we go tgif that's it that was fun thanks jordan uh thanks everybody for tuning in if you haven't hit do the youtube stuff hit the like button and uh on your way out and um candace is subscribed so we'll leave it there we go so if you haven't thank you candace jordan, go ahead out, appreciate check it check out his channel um, that's it, everybody. Thanks, Jordan. Thanks again. We'll let you go because I know you have uh, fun stuff to do now. And uh, thanks for taking the time. And yeah, thanks, everybody. Preschool to get to. <laughs> thanks, everybody, okay. for joining. We'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Okay. All right.